Hey everybody, it's Durger time. Welcome to the final week of Dev Journals. For some of you, this may be a bit outdated because upon release of this video, you can actually try your hands at the game with a free demo. The demo is available. I've left it in the description for you. It only runs for a few months from January to March, but it does give you a taste of what you can expect before the worldwide release next Saturday on August 3rd. Now, with all of that said, let's get into the final week of Dev Journals. This week is simultaneously the lightest in content, but also the heaviest in scope, uh, with all, many small entries being added each day as they kind of blitz through uh, the remaining updates. Because of the nature of those, I, I do highly encourage you to check out the full Dev Journal for more information, as I'm only gonna be really going over the topics that I find most interesting and important from this week. Also, I highlight, if you are liking this content and you're looking forward to more, please do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, lets me know what you're interested in. I have a big plan to kind of release a whole host of new TW9 content. I think there's going to be a lot of people jumping into this game for the first time, as well as some lapsed players that maybe waited out TW2020 for some more fixes and are enticed back, in, back into the whole uh, scene here. And I want to provide some content that are focused on tutorials, tips, some basics to help you get into the game, whether you're looking into getting into databases, the basics of the game, uh, making your own databases. I'm going to try to have a whole bunch of content available. So if you're interested in that, you want to be notified when it comes out, please, you know what to do. With all of that said, let's get into it. Because of the fast and heavy nature of this final week of Dev Journals, I'm not going to break these up into days. I'm just going to highlight the specific items that I think are interesting, that are important to know if you're getting into the game for the first time or returning, that are some are more minor changes, but some are more significant. So let's go ahead and let's get through all of the big changes that I think are interesting that were announced in this final week of Dev Journals. AI managers, by popular request, AI controlled companies now make use of managers in the same way that a player would. So what that means is managers take on new clients, drop old clients, uh, etc. This will help make AI controlled companies feel more realistic and make managers who are mostly sidelined in the previous games take on more important roles. When viewing an AI controlled company's roster, your user can now see where appropriate lines of text that identify how the AI is currently planning to use that worker. The example they provide here is that you might see an older worker is quote unquote being phased out due to declining skills or that a young up and comer is receiving a push as a rising talent or even that someone has ended up in the doghouse. Previously, this information was hidden. The effects of these pushes is that it increases or decreases a worker's score when the AI is calculating who wins matches. So they make people more or less likely to be the victor. As such, the change adds a little bit of extra color to the game world. So it's kind of nice. You're going to be able to see what the AI is doing and thinking, and it might be helpful when you're deciding who you want to try to scout. But also, it's just going to kind of bring out sort of the logic that's going on behind the scenes improved job hunting, the user can now apply for other jobs without needing to quit their current position first. It's going to be really useful if you're doing like a road to glory save where you're jumping from location to location. You can kind of scout out a new employer before accepting an offer or leaving and uh, becoming unemployed. Setting a TV location. This is a popular request edition. Television shows can now have their location fixed to a specific area, region, or venue, just like events. This is used for many real world scenarios where a company had a specific place they always held their tapings. As usual, this can be preset via the editor or done in game. And like events, the user is not restricted to following the instructions if they don't want to. So again, this adds a lot of nice little flavor that you're going to be able to go in and modify to your heart's content. So you can have some of those realistic situations where certain venues are kind of linked to a certain area or a certain company. It's very nice. Similarly, geographical title belts in another often requested feature, they've added the ability to have title belts only be defended in specific areas or regions. Broadcasting failure blocks by request, 
the blocks for negotiating a new broadcasting deal because of a recent failure has been modified. Instead of a blanket ban, it now applies only to the broadcasters of the same size or bigger than the ones that were previously involved in the failure. So this is going to just help and make it a little bit easier that if you bit off a little bit more than you could chew, you're still going to be able to get broadcasters. They're just going to be at a lower level. So you're going to be punished, but your, your run might not end because of some unfortunate uh, over-eagerness on your part. This is an interesting one, and one that I think might end up being controversial, especially for some players that, uh, want, again, want maybe a little bit less of that simulation challenge that comes with a TW game versus another type of like booking simulator. In keeping with the theme of trying to make the user's avatars feel more a part of the game world, the avatar now earns a wage, unlike previous games where they effectively work for free. The amount is automatically set to the avatar's estimated value at the start of each show. The game also keeps track of career earnings in the user section, so if you wanted to track that. So two things, one, it's going to make it interesting if you wanted to run a save of like a zero to a million, how quickly can a personal avatar accrue wealth? It's kind of an interesting personal challenge you could set. The other thing that's more interesting is that it kind of balances it out so that if you pick a wrestler, for example, to run a company, if they are highly rated in popularity and skill, they're going to be taking a big, big pay increase. There's no way to forego that. They're just going to be taking a ton of money from your company. It's going to make playing that a little bit harder, which in some regards is kind of annoying, uh, at least someone like me. That likes to do interesting what ifs if i wanted to like i don't know like let's say cm punk makes his own company or something like that well cm punk's gonna be taking a lot of money uh, <laughs> and it wasn't the case before but it does make sense for a balance approach and a lot of the things about tw9 has been about making finances a lot harder we'll see if this gets tweaked or modified over the next couple updates to the game after release i expect this will be kind of tweak to be fine-tuned to be uh, maybe a little bit less punishing but we'll, we'll see how how it shapes out this is awesome this is so great for people that are just trying to figure out how to play this game the in-game handbook has been updated and upgraded to allow it to be fully searchable so for example you could type in tour contracts and it will return any entry that contains that phrase and this makes finding things a lot easier so if you're ever dealing with something really esoteric in the game and you can't figure out what the hell's going on you're going to be able to type it in to the handbook and more quickly kind of get to the information you're actually looking for Picture Changes section now includes a new trigger called Unmaskings, which allows database editors to make it so that a character can be automatically selected to switch to a non-masked picture. So if you have a worker, you're doing playing a lot of, uh, you know, Lucha Libre uh, companies or characters, database makers now can have it so that when uh, unmasking happens, it'll automatically switch over to an unmasked image super nice i think the biggest change of the week is this edition of celebrities in previous games celebrities were limited to being unnamed optional extras for events in tw9 by popular request they are now named characters who can fully interact with the game world they are added to in the worker section meaning they can be modeled in the same way as any other character and are identified by a celebrity field, which can be A-list, B-list, C-list, D-list, etc., or fad. And this is to show how big of a star they are. So a fad would be a low-level celebrity who is only active for a short period of time, sort of a flash of a pan, maybe some a viral character that you know shows up for a second. If a worker is being set to being a celebrity, they gain a special set of rules. The main one is that having them on a show automatically boosts the attendance with the size of the boost relating to their celebrity level. Their level also affects how often they'll sign deals and what their demands would be, the minimum size of the company they're willing to deal with, how long they'll remain actively available to accept bookings, etc. 
Additionally, celebrities have some special restrictions on their usage and interactions. For example, their popularity doesn't get affected by how they're booked and they don't become involved in backstage incidents. A full list of celebrity rules is included in the game handbook. So if you kind of want to see more on how that new system works, if you get the demo, you can actually pop it open in the handbook and take a look. Because these are part of the workers section, and therefore have access to the same stats, attributes, etc. as normal workers, there's scope for database makers to simulate all sorts of different celebrities. You can make celebrities who are part, are able to take part in matches. So think like a David Arquette. You could even make celebrities who will be willing to take part in death matches via the attribute system. Think of David Arquette. <laughs> You can also set those who are purely there as personalities or who can be used as color commentators. This would allow pretty much every real world example of celebrity that's ever been in wrestling, whether it's a guest host on a Raw or you know a singer showing up for a national anthem on WrestleMania, or stars who are actually getting into the ring to all be simulated. This is a huge change before you kind of had to decide whether you wanted to add certain workers. This now allows database editors to go hog wild and add anybody they want to the game world to simulate. So everybody from a John Stewart to, like I said, a David Arquette or a, you know anybody, you now have the ability and you can even have them wrestle. They're just gonna have different rules based on how they function. Another requested update is the introduction of minis. Mini competitors are really popular, uh, mostly I think in like Lucha Libre, but are competitors of a certain height stature and they've kind of added special rules to them. Obviously that you could have people existing in the game world already, but now a mini worker is defined as a male competitor of five foot or below or a female competitor of four foot 10 and below. There are special attributes now added that can be assigned to workers to alter their categorization. So the example is either making them a mini worker when they don't qualify, if they're just maybe slightly above that height threshold, or removing the mini status when they do. If a worker is considered mini, they'll generally be kept separate from non-mini workers for booking purposes. So again, that'll be, I think, for the AI, uh, but just to try to think, make things a little bit more realistic. Each company can optionally have a male or female minis division, which can be assigned a size category to tell the game how many workers should be a part of it, similar to how the women's division is set up. Additionally, titles can be set as being exclusive to mini divisions, so you can have a, a title just for that sort of group. If a company does have a division, it'll be booked as being a separate from the main roster. Of course, the player is, as always, free to mix and match, so there's nothing stopping you from booking a mixed match where a non-minis team with is fighting minis, or you know, workers are workers are aware of the difference, however, so a non-mini may complain if asked to lose to a mini. So there's sort of some dynamics going on that they've added to the game. With that and celebrities, sort of these two features are just there to kind of further add realism to the game world and allow real life scenarios to be simulated that really previously couldn't be in any of the past games. And that is it for all the dev journals. So now it's up to you. Go out, play the demo, play the full release next week. Let me know, come back to this video. Let me know what you think if you've played the demo already. Uh, I'm going to have a live stream on August 3rd where we're gonna play the full release of the game. And uh, we're gonna be looking at the converter, we're gonna be looking at all the little features and, you know, kind of just getting our hands deep in the game to kind of discover some of those features that maybe weren't expressly stated in this dev journal and uh, just kind of get a feel for it. So if you're interested, come swing by, but that is it. Thank you guys for riding with me on these dev journals. I hope you're excited about the games. I certainly am. And I'll see you guys on the flip. Thanks for watching.